Welcome viewers to our ongoing program, Focus, coming to you from Channel 17, Center for Media and Democracy here in Burlington, Vermont. I'm your host, Margaret Harrington, in the Channel 17 newsroom, and my special guest today is Ken Quinn from U.S. Term Limits. Welcome, Ken. Margaret, thank you so much for having me on today. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. We have this very important subject here. The title for our program is, It's Time We Term Limit Congress. So, Ken, let's start off with some questions here. Would you start off by telling us about the term limits for Congress legislation that is being supported by some bipartisan legislators here in Vermont? Yeah, we have some real exciting news. Uh, just to kind of give folks a little bit of a background of what this issue is about, we, we're trying to get the states to propose a term limit amendment on Congress. Now, here in New Hampshire, uh, Vermont, we have two sponsors. Uh, we have a sponsor in the House. The, the resolution is JRH2, and the sponsor is Bob Helm. And then we have a sponsor in the Senate, uh, Senator Debbie Ingram, and that's going to be coming out probably about a week or so. And what this resolution is that we need the state legislature to pass is a what's called an Article 5 application. It's applying to Congress to call an Article 5 convention to allow the states to meet, draft the amendment, vote on it, and then send it out to the states for ratification. So we need 34 states to call the convention and then 38 states to ratify the amendment. And so that's what this resolution is all about. Okay, so that's Article 5 of the United States Constitution. Yes, yes, which is the amending provision in the Constitution. Okay. And I'll briefly, basically what Article 5 allows is only two ways to propose amendments. Either two-thirds of both houses of Congress propose it and then send it out to the states for ratification. And that's how we have gotten all of our 27 amendments came from Congress. The second option allows the states the exact same ability to propose amendments. And so we need two thirds of the states to agree on the subject matter because it's limited to what they submit in their applications. And so our application is sing, uh, for a single subject, which is a congressional term limit amendment. Okay, and can you give us some idea of what the language is in that proposed amendment to the Vermont legislature? Yeah, actually it's very, um, we are not even advocating how long the term should be. We just want to have the states to have this discussion on behalf of the American people. Now, we are also trying to advance this through Congress. So we actually do have an amendment in Congress right now. And that amendment calls for limiting U.S. senators to two terms. So their term is six years uh, each, so that'd be a total of 12 years. And then limiting House of Representatives to three terms for a total of six years. So one person uh, c combined could serve a total of 18 years in Congress. Now that's currently in um, Congress right now. I don't have a lot of hope that's going to get passed by the two-thirds of Congress, and so that's why we're advancing it through the states. And with the state initiative is not advocating those specific terms. We, we left that um, kind of open to let the states have that discussion in the convention. Okay, so how long has this been before Congress? How long has this this proposal well, been? Well, um, our amendment in Congress, we typically have it introduced every session. and. Um, like I said, we actually this year we did have a um, committee hearing on behalf of this uh, amendment. I think it's been 20 years since we've been even a been able to get a committee hearing. And so obviously our biggest uh, roadblock to getting this done is Congress itself. And so that's why we need the states to do this because without the states um, pressuring Congress to do something, it, it's just probably not going to happen. Now, personally, I don't, I want to go all the way to have the states have this meeting to do it because I think the amendment that they draft and vote on is probably going to have a little more uh, teeth into it than what Congress would propose. Yeah. Okay, and what so far is the progress with the states to having a voting for this convention? Yeah, well, the process is very uh, interesting. These these applications, they're called Article Five applications. It requires two thirds of the states to submit. Uh, or, or basically it's a passage of a resolution by the legislatures. So we need today 34 state legislatures to pass these on the same subject matter. 
Now, there's been over 400 of these applications passed by the states. Now, they've, they've never gotten to that critical mass of two-thirds. Um, it came very close um, a few times for um, the 17th Amendment. The 17th Amendment, which is the direct election of senators, was proposed by Congress, but it was because of the pressure the states put on through this process. They got within two states shy of calling the convention to propose it themselves, and it, that pressure um, prodded Congress to do it. So right now, there are 15 state legislatures that have submitted a, an application to Congress on this subject matter. Okay, now that brings us to what, what is the major resistance to U.S. congressional term limits? Well, number one would be Congress. Um, they don't like this idea. You know, the people, the, the American people, 82% in a, in a recent poll, 82% of the American voters want term limits on Congress. And that polls high with Republicans, Democrats, independents, across the board. It's, it's really um, a very popular subject. Now, back in our history, back in the 1990s, 23 states actually passed laws, most of them at the ballot box by the people, to put term limits on their own members of Congress in their states. And unfortunately, what happened was in the case against us, it was U.S. Uh, term limits versus Thornton. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled against those state laws, overturned all of them, and ruled that the only way this can be accomplished was under Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution, either by Congress or the states. Okay. Yeah, so we're pushing it both ways, and uh, I'm very excited that we have this uh, in the Vermont legislature. Um, the Senate resolution is going to be coming out probably next week, and so if you're out there listening and watching, we need your help. We want to get this passed. This is a reform that is desperately needed uh, for the American people. Washington, D.C., Congress is broken. It's dysfunctional. And we need to send new people with fresh ideas down to D.C. and, um, and get things done that need to get done. We, we're, the, the, the incumbents in Washington who have been there for decades continue to kick the, cans on, uh, kick the can down the road on really important issues. And the problem is they seem to care more about their reelection and maintaining power. And this will help break up that backlog that we have. Well, can, can you tell uh, people here in Vermont, voters here, what we can do about the, the resolution, the pending resolution? Well, yeah, well, the first thing you could do, I really appreciate it, is sign our petition at uh, termlimits.com. That's important because that's how I'm going to communicate with everybody in the state. Uh, once you sign that, you'll be in our database, and we only use it to communicate uh, through email. And we will be sending out calls to action. Um, we'll be doing probably events at, at the Capitol, definitely public hearings. Uh, we're hoping to get a public hearing uh, here in Vermont in the Senate and the House so that the, the people of Vermont can come and share in front of the, the members of the committees why they want this. And so we are going to need as many people in Vermont as possible to make send the emails to their legislators asking them to pass this and come on out to the Capitol to test. So that's really critical. If they don't hear from the, their constituents, they don't see it as that important of an issue. Mm -hmm. And so we just got to make some noise. And the, uh, the website is www.termlimits.com? Termlimits.com. Yeah, okay. and the and petition we can, is right there on the front page. Okay, great. Yeah. So, and how do we get to this? How did we, in our history in the United States, our short mm. history, how did we get to this being acceptable that politicians have lifetime positions in the U.S. Congress? How did this come about? Yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating history. Uh, part of it has to do with our lifespans. <laughs> lifespans have greatly increased over the decades due to technology. And, you know, back in the old days, people didn't live to 70 and 80 all that often. So, um, but what happened was... Our first Constitution had term limits. Back then, they called it rotation of office. So the Articles of Confederation had rotation of office. Many of the state constitutions had rotation of office, term limits. And what the reason for that was the founders believed that anybody who holds a seat for too long, it gets to their head. 
and it becomes more about maintaining power and influence than doing the will of the, of the people. And so they saw rotation of office or what we call term limits today as a probably the number one way of protecting our freedom and our liberty and not letting it turn into um, an elite aristocracy. Unfortunately, what happened is over time, it's human nature. And we have just kind of not paid a lot of attention. Now, back in the 1990s, the American people were really pushing for term limits, as, as we saw with the, with the state's passage of, of those state laws. Um, unfortunately, because state legislators have been sort of unaware of their own authority under Article 5, or, and some of them have been afraid of using this, they have allowed this to continue for decades. And so we need the state legislators to stand up, use their authority under Article 5. They have the same authority to propose amendments as Congress does. Now, I don't want to go down too far of a rabbit hole here, but Congress has introduced 12,000 amendments to the U.S. Constitution. 12,000 since 1789. Only 33 of those were proposed by the two-thirds needed, and then 27 of those have been ratified. On the other side, the states have never introduced one under Article 5, so they've never even had the opportunity to meet to discuss an issue. And all we're seeking is to give the states the same opportunity Congress has taken advantage of 12,000 times. That's all this is. So, so, Ken, could you go into what were the results when there was a rotation of office? What were the results in legislation well, at that time? Well, yeah, if you, if you were to look at our founders, our framers, uh, many of them were in office for many years, but they didn't hold the same seat. They moved around, governor, Congress, Senate, and so this doesn't prevent somebody from serving um, the people. It right, just prevents them from holding one seat for decades. And so it's, it keeps the government robust. It keeps the representation closer to the, to the people, the voters. And it gives more opportunity for regular folks, citizens, to participate in our government. And so it's critical to maintaining a, uh, a functioning democracy. And so we need to have term limits so that the, the will of the people, or the, our voice is heard. Right now, they're not listening to us. They listen to the funders. They listen to the PACs, the lobbyists, and the special interest groups that are spending millions of dollars down in Washington, and yet they leave us behind. And that everybody knows that. And this is the only way we can fix it. Well, well then, have we reached a tipping point, and will term limits soon be the law in the United States? Well, we haven't reached the tipping point yet, but we need to. And the only way we're going to reach that tipping point is by getting the people to rise up and demand this. We cannot depend on Congress to do it. They've been talking about term limits every year. Last year alone, 60 amendments were introduced by Congress, 60. About 15 of those were for term limits, ours amongst the others. Mm -hmm. And it gets lip service. You know, I believe the sponsors intend and and want it but we can never get enough of them in congress to pass it by the two-thirds and so we need the states and we need the people in the states to demand from their state legislator not their federal legislators their state legislators to do this and we need to take action we can't allow this to continue much longer because things are only going to get worse if you really want to make a difference in the direction of our nation. We need to initiate term limits. It's not the silver bullet for everything, but what it will do, it will break up the power that the incumbent party has in Washington, D.C. It's This is not a left or a right problem. They're both guilty. It's those in power that are controlling everything. And by having term limits established on Congress, it will get infusion of new people with new ideas, new energy, and it will break up this, this hold that the lobbyists have over these incumbents that have been there for decades. Mm -hmm. And so I'm excited about it. I, I think it's going to be a tremendous reform, but it's going to be a very heavy lift. Once we get close to calling this convention, the amount of money that's going to be spent to stop us is going to be overwhelming. And it's going to be a tough battle, but we can get it done. We've done it once before with the president. We have term limits on the president. That's the 22nd Amendment. And I, I want to mention that briefly because next week on February 27th is National Term Limits Day. 
We started this last year as a way to educate the, 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 the folks, the, the people on this, this effort. And we chose that day because that's the date the 22nd Amendment was ratified in 1951, which put two terms on the U.S. president. 1951. 1951. That's, that's within a lot of our, our, uh, yes. our lifetime. So. Yeah, yes. And so if it's good enough for the president, which I believe it is, it should be good enough for members of Congress. And we've got to get it done. Yeah. And well, what are, well, let's go in deeper into what are the main benefits of having congressional term limits? Yeah, th there's many. Um, we would have a greater representation of citizens. You would, right now, a lot of folks in Washington, they become career politicians. They know that they can turn that into a lifelong career. Um, we would have people from different backgrounds, teachers, artists, farmers, instead of the, the lawyers and the multimillionaire CEOs. You know, we, we, we just need better representation. Term limits actually would give regular people like you and I, a real shot of, of winning an election. Because right now, it takes millions of dollars to go against an incumbent. And a lot of good people don't even bother to run for office because they know they can't raise that kind of money. With term limits, people will know that, hey, in two years, that seat's gonna be open. I've got a good shot at that. And so they will take the time and plan and, and run for that seat. Term limits just provides fair and competitive elections. Right now, only about 20% of the races for Congress are competitive, 20%. And we need to make that 100%. And term limits will go uh, a long way to making that happen. We will get new people with fresh ideas. We will break up this hold that the big corporations have, the, the PACs, the lobbies have on these individuals in Washington, D.C. It will reduce corruption tremendously. Right now, 97% of corporate PAC money goes to incumbents. They don't give it to a challenger. Mm. They give it to the people that they've been owned in their back pocket for decades. And so we got to change this, this corrupt system. It, we have to change the structure of it, and that's what this will help accomplish. Well, going back into a little bit into the history, like 1951, yes. the amendment limits the presidency to, to two terms. Two terms. And but, but uh, what, uh, what were was there any tipping point in the past for uh, for uh, term limits? To it, well, I would say the 1990s was the tipping point. That's when 23 um, states tried to put it on their own members of Congress. 22 states pass laws to put term limits on their state legislatures. So the 1990s was really when term ah, limits. Okay, they were they, the state legislators. Congress and the state legislatures. Yeah. And right now, out of those 22 states, uh, 15 of those are still in place. So some of the states um, overturned their term limits. Um, Wait but, a minute. So the, the U.S. Supreme Court couldn't overturn the state's constriction on term limits. Correct. Terms. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the, the, either, I, and I don't know. Every state's a little bit different. Um, some of those states, it was done by the legislature. I believe some required a, a, an amendment to their constitution. So every state's a little bit different. Now, I'm from Maine. We have term limits in Maine uh, on the state legislatures. Um, basically, it doesn't ban them for life. They have to serve, uh, I think, four terms in the House, then four terms in the Senate. They have to sit out for, I think, one term, and then they can go back and, and uh, hold those seats again. Now, so currently we have 15 states that still have term limits on their state legislatures. Now, what's interesting, uh, there was a report that came out, I think it was the Mercatix, I forget the name, is a report on the fin uh, fiscal ratings of the states, all 50 states. Of four out of the top five, of those states have term limits on their legislature. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not making the connection that term limits make a state more fiscally responsible, but what I'm saying is it doesn't just, what we hear often is that, oh, term limits are bad for a state. You know, it's the end of the world. It's simply not true. It's just simply not true. It allows more people to participate in the government. And, and what's good about that is once they're out, they have to now live under the laws that they passed. And so we have more people, think about that. If, if Congress, if we had a lot of people going to Congress, knowing they had a short amount of time to get the job done and then had to return to live under those laws, I think we'd see a lot of
different laws being passed or, or not passed. Um, right now, they've got it kind of cushy because they're kind of protected. And so we need to change that. Yeah, it, seem, it does seem like a, a big machine, a machine politics that has been in place for a very long time. Yeah. Um, I'm excited, though. We can get this done. And uh, what's great about it is this is something that the people want. You know, out of all of the issues out there today, this is probably the number one issue that can unite everybody. Because everyone sees the dysfunction in Washington, D.C., they, they're frustrated with Congress. They see that it's more about them raising money for their reelection and their party and doing the favors from the funders. What we need is to change that, take that power away from them, redistribute that power to the people, back to the people, so that more people can be involved in this process. Think about this. Think about the choices we will have as voters Every time there's an open seat election, we're going to have, instead of the same two people running for that seat, uh, we're going to have maybe 10 people in a primary, you know, and so it's going to increase the competition and hopefully increase um, better candidates over time for us. And so it's, a, it's a really a win-win for everybody. Okay. And it's, it's not about, there's no possibility of eliminating money from the whole process. Because well... Not completely, but it will do, it will greatly reduce the amount of money spent right now because it's right now they are so holding to the lobbyists and the PACs because they have to get reelected and they get caught up in this vicious cycle of constantly running for reelection and raising money for that. You know, 60 Minutes did a great report. It's called Dialing for Dollars, I think it's called on YouTube. Just Google that. 30 to 70% of time uh, by members of Congress is spent raising money f for their party or their reelection. Mm -hmm. With term limits, money will not be such an issue because <clears throat> they're going to be there for a short period of time and then they're gone. The lobbyists are going to lose the the impact that they have on these people because you're going to be we're going to be crashing the shores of Congress with new people all the time, and now the lobbyists are, instead of owning them for decades, they're going to have to actually defend their issue and sell their issue on the integrity of it and the importance of it than just buying them off. That's the importance of this. So it will go a long way to reducing the amount of money in politics. Okay. So, Ken, you've presented this very clearly that we are in, in, at, in a kind of crisis about term limits, that it, it seems to be ac accepted by the great populace because we are uneducated about the possibility of not, of, of actually having term limits. So. Yeah, I'd like to give the, the voters hope. You know, we can do more than just elect people. You know, electing people is great, but that's not our only option. The framers, in their wisdom, gave us Article 5 as a check against a runaway federal government. And one of the reasons they gave us this convention mode was because they knew that the government they were creating would, they actually predicted, it would become tyrannical and would not listen to the people. And so they wanted the people through their state legislators to have a voice in the amending process. And if they felt there, there were certain amendments needed that Congress has refused to propose, then you know what? We'll do it through the states, and the states will get it done. Because only the states can amend the Constitution. They're the ones that have the power to ratify amendments. Congress can't ratify. Congress can only propose. Mm -hmm. So why are we leaving it up to Congress to always be the one proposing if they're the problem? If they're not listening to us, why do we think they're going to give us the solution? So it's time that we turn to the states and advocate our legislators to pass our term limit application, to pass other applications that are out there that can really bring necessary re reforms to our government. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what is your plan as, as a, the regional director of U.S. term limits today? Well, my plan ultimately is to get to this convention and have the states propose this amendment. That's my 
long-term goal. Uh, in the short term, I, I cover 17 states, and I was sharing with you earlier, Margaret, how I've got like 10 states that are active right now, so I'm gonna be doing a lot of traveling. I'm very excited uh, that Vermont is introducing the resolution. It should be coming out, I think, next week, and that's why, for your listeners, please email me, or first go to our website, sign that petition. I will be sending out notifications of, of, the, of the resolution, the calls to action. If they want to help me, I need help. We need grassroots people in the state. I live in Maine. There's a little bit of a drive for me this morning, about three and a half hours. So we need local people to volunteer, to get, come alongside me and help us get this done because we can do this if we get people involved. Okay, and you're meeting with, who is that again? I, actually, I have a meeting, I'm heading to, um, the Capitol right now to meet with uh, Senator Debbie Ingram, who is our Senate sponsor. And that's gonna be coming out uh, hopefully next week, the resolution. And as Senate sponsor, she will introduce this proposal yep, to the- Yep, she's introducing the resolution. The resolution. Uh, Representative of Bob Helm has already introduced it in the House. So we're gonna have it in the House and the Senate this year. And we want to have the committees call at least a public hearing to, so we can have the people of Vermont come and speak on behalf of this issue. Okay, and then the process would be a public hearing from the committee. Well, what is the name of the committee? Oh boy, I, I, I think it's Government Operations on the House. I, uh, I can get that for you. Okay, but, um, okay. If you just look up JRH2, that's the resolution, it'll, it'll show you which committee it's been assigned to. Okay. So how the process works is, you know, once the, the committee will have a hearing where the public is allowed to come and um, testify. Yeah. And usually, every state's a little bit different, but most states will typically, they will vote on uh, that resolution or that bill. Uh, a week or so afterwards, not always, but in Maine, that's how it's usually done in my state. Uh, so some states, if it passes the committee, then it's straight to the House or the Senate for a vote, a full floor vote, and then the process starts all over again in the other body, okay? Right, right, right. Um, some states, even if it doesn't pass the committee, it still may get a vote. In Maine, everything gets voted on in Maine, mm. even, if it, even if the committee didn't recommend it. So. We need to get to a hearing here in Vermont. We need to pass it. There's absolutely no reason. Vermont actually passed an Article 5 resolution a few years ago for a campaign finance amendment. And so this is a great reform along with campaign finance. And that's what we need to, to do. We've got to have this hearing and get a vote this year and pass it. And we always, here in Vermont, we always have town meeting resolutions where each, each mm. section of Vermont can pass resolutions at their town meeting. So there's a possibility this could get on maybe next year's town meeting. Oh, that's a great idea. I haven't uh, really thought about that, but if that would help us, absolutely. I'll have to talk to you more about that because that's a great idea. Well, please talk to the legislators when you meet with them today. Okay, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I'm very excited. So um, we really could use a lot of help here in Vermont and signing that petition will get you connected to me. And I promise I don't send a lot of emails. We don't send out a lot of emails, but it's, they're very important when we do. Yeah, and, and you've, uh, you've awakened us immensely today, Ken, and just send us out with, with some of the main reasons, again, why, we should, we, why, why should we, we should limit terms for Congress people to begin with the, con with the U.S. Congress. Yeah, well, we all know Washington, D.C. is broken. It's dysfunctional. The biggest problem we see down there is that those that hold the power are refusing to make the tough choices for the American people. We have a health care crisis, immigration crisis, you name it, spending crisis. We've been hearing this for decades. Nothing's getting done. And so it's time that we, the people, rose up. And the first thing we need to do is eliminate how long people can stay in office. It can no longer be a career for people, a lifelong career. And what term limits will do is reinvigorate this government of ours. We'll, get the, we'll have the ability to send new people with fresh ideas. More people will participate. The voters will have more options. And through that, we will then have enough people down in Washington who will tackle the tough issues because now they're free. They know, hey, I only have a short period of time to get this done. I'm going to get it done. They don't become trapped on this vicious cycle of having to raise money to win their reelection. 
we got to end it. It is time to end that. Only term limits can get that done. So we would really appreciate your support. Uh, go to termlimits.com, sign our petition. My email address uh, is there, uh, I think, on the screen, kquinn at termlimits.com. If you want to help, there's a volunteer uh, tab. Fill out the survey. That's a great way of getting connected with me, and I'm looking forward to working with you, and let's pass this in Vermont this year. Thank you, Ken Quinn, U.S. Term Limits. All right. Thank you, Margaret, for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, viewers, and thanks, Channel 17. Goodbye for now.